So Thomas, John, yeah. tell me how you like to be called. How, how do you pursue yourself as? What what my title would be? Yeah. Uh, as, as a psychic medium. That's the title that I use, psychic medium. So you're a young psychic medium. Right? Yes, I'm young. Yeah. Um, so you just uh, we just spent a little session together, uh -huh. uh, about a half hour of uh, telling me about me, and you've never met me. You have no idea who I am, no clue of nothing, and I have to admit that uh, you were on on every scene. <laughs> so it's actually scary. So we're probably not going to ask you how you do it because this is this is you know it's a gift that you have that started when you were. Five, right? Something yeah, happened. Something happened when you were five. Tell me what is. I read what happened. You're gonna tell us. I freaked out. So now, <laughs> I want. I want to hear it from you. But when I was a little boy, of course, as a kid, I didn't know anything was different or anything like that. I just I would tell my parents things about my mom and my dad about, you know, seeing my grandfather who had actually passed uh, away 20 years before I was born, and I really didn't have a really strong connection with him. We didn't talk about him. We, it wasn't like he was a big part of our family, and I would tell my parents things, and it was really got weird for my parents when I would start telling them things that there was no way I would know, especially because they were things in the future. Like I would tell them that, oh, you know, grandpa's really worried that grandma's going to get cancer, and she's going to get cancer soon. And, Two weeks later, after I told them that when I was 10 years old, and two weeks later she was diagnosed with cancer, and she she was able to overcome it, but still they were really freaked out by it. So, <laughs> and then and then you so you went to school, and then at what point you you don't go to school to be a psychic after right. you know after you have, you, you graduate from from high school. So how did you get into that career? That I'm sure, were your parents? Yes, my son is fine. Do whatever you want, or like. This, we have a problem with my son. We don't want him to do that. Well, right. what was your life? Were you fighting against your your gift, or or I mean, not to yourself, but with your surroundings? Yeah, definitely. When I was growing up as a kid, um, my parents were very proactively against it. They would take me to therapists and rabbis and priests and stuff like that because they didn't know. I mean, no one in our family was like this. It wasn't like well, it's not like everybody. You know, right. Not every family has somebody <laughs> that gives to you. So right. So they didn't know what to do and. Like every parent, they don't, you know, they don't want their kid to be different. They, they were just worried. And so I kind of grew away from it, basically, because it just was something that was so negatively reinforced. I moved away from it to no fault of their own. And I went to college. I studied psychology and human development, and I wanted to work with people. And actually what happened, the turning point was we didn't, God, you know, thank God, we didn't have a lot of death in our family as a kid. I just we really just, you know, everyone was pretty healthy. And... Right after I graduated college, we had a couple people in our family that I was very close with, died, my, namely my mom's mom, and I had actually a best friend that passed away, and they started to come to me in my dreams and tell me stuff, so it like came back to me after college. And that's when I was, I put the brakes on and I told my mom and my dad, I said, you know, I think I have to do this. This is bizarre and this is to the point where if I don't, I feel like I'm, I, I must have been sent here. Some people play an instrument, some people act, some people do whatever it is that their gift is, and I just feel like this must be my gift, I'm supposed to do this. That's a very, very special gift. <laughs> right. Yeah. When we started the session, you, you, you hold my hand, mm -hmm. in between your hands, is that the way you start with? Yeah, usually to pick up somebody's energy, or sometimes like if somebody wants, sometimes people actually come because someone that they know won't come, but they feel like, so they'll bring an object of the person. So it's just really like everything retains energy, so it's just kind of a way to feel stuff. And then during the entire session, your eyes are closed. This is when you see, right? Yeah, I see things and hear things, and I actually like to keep my eyes closed because I, I really don't want to see if somebody's shaking their head or wincing or something like that. I just kind of want to just be whatever I get. I don't want to be influenced by, you know, your reactions or right. whoever I'm sitting with reaction. And then you keep saying, they're telling me, they're telling me, <laughs> so there is the connection, the yeah. powers, the yeah. spirits, right? Yeah, the angels, the guides, I mean, sometimes I connect. Yours was more about your future, so... I'll connect with people that we have. We have spirit guides, we have, you know, uh, sometimes I even just connect with the higher power, the divine source, you know, God, or, you know, just whoever I need to connect with. And then once you've done a session, mm -hmm. uh, um, are you completely drained or you're fine? You're just the same when you started or you, it, it takes so much energy out of you that you, you, you can't do anything for two hours after that? What's the... It's pretty draining, yeah, after I do one of them, you know, and it, it's hard to, all, you know, to turn it off sometimes too, just when I'm doing 
at what point do you know that you are done telling the person sitting in front of you, seeing that nothing comes up to you? Right. It depends. It really depends. I mean, sometimes people just have so much stuff around them, but sometimes, you know, I, I get information pretty quickly. It's not like I have to pull it out. So, you know, usually I, you know, I can, I do half hour and hour readings. I actually prefer to do a half hour, 20 minute reading because, you know, I mean, after a half hour, I mean, you can cover a lot of information, especially if someone's just sitting there listening. Right. And then you can be anywhere. Like you, you're from New York. Mm -hmm. uh, today we're not in New York, we're in Beverly Hills. Uh, and then if somebody flies you over to Rio de Janeiro or to London, you, 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 you're in your element, you can do that. And I do stuff on the phone too. Oh, you still on the phone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just so real estate. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you have clients for high end uh, businessmen, politicians, yeah. from. I have, the yeah, celebrities. I have, uh, yeah, politicians. I've had um, people in other countries. I have people that are homemakers. I have, sometimes I had a, last week I had a seven year old boy that came with his mom because he wanted to have a reading. And his mom, I said, well, if your mom says okay, she approves. So. And then you, you love doing this, right? This mm -hmm. is your passion. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's a job, but it's actually a passion that you turn into a job, or it's a gift, or it's something that you you you, you would never do anything else, right? No, I mean, I, I love my job, and it's it's validating because also, you know, when people come and have a reading with me, I mean, I, I just I get so much great feedback from people, and they they'll come and say. I mean, for some people, especially if they have, like, I, I find if they have had, like, profound drama in their life, a loss, or they've, you know, lost their job, or their, you know, their wife has cancer, or something really crazy, I mean, that they can get a little clarity on that. I mean, people have told me in the past that, um, and these are my clients telling me this, that, you know, I've saved them 10 years of therapy, that they were working on something, they couldn't get it resolved, and to come to me and get a reading where they kind of know the answer. I think people, you know, that's helpful to people. So, to know that you're, you know, you're a good or great psychic, you, your clients are returning, mm -hmm. they come back to you and they do confirm what you've told them during the session. Right? Yeah, and I always, I, I always say too, I, I don't think I've ever had a, con a reading where someone didn't send me at least one person because they said, oh, I had such a great experience, I'm going to send you someone. So now, where do I, how do I find you? I'm at manhattanmedium.com or mediumthomas.com and I'm also on uh, Twitter at mediumthomas on Twitter. Okay, that's how we can connect yeah. with you and get an appointment. Mm -hmm. and and uh, get information about you. Yes. And, and, well, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, I was very uh, scared to, to come <laughs> see you, but I, now I feel much more. I feel comfortable. I think that that ease that you have, you just you just give it out. So it's uh, it was a it was a nice uh, time with you. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.